I bet we'd have a, a lot better chance of doing some of this, like flying around like that and, and understanding all that. If we maybe had like a, a way to properly measure gravity waves and like quantum gravity tubes and stuff, you know, if there's only like an experiment or something that would tell us more that would, about. That doesn't was, get better that than terrible. that, Tim. It does not um, get better than that. <laughs> I don't know if that was the uh, best or the worst. I, I don't know. Joe's not ready. So let's talk about uh, gravitational waves, shall we? <laughs> um, so, okay. Um, I, I do have like a couple, just a couple of stories that kind of popped up in my feed uh, at about the same time that had to do with gravitational waves. And I thought I would just kind of like uh, talk about it. We could talk about it. Yeah. Do I need Gravity. a gravitational surfboard? Yes. Ooh. Silver surfer. Ooh. Silver surfer. Sorry, that just sounded cool. Like, like what, what if you could ride a gravitational wave through space? Mm. Yeah. Aliens. I mean, they're tiny, but Aliens. give it to yeah. me. Pew, pew. Silver Surfer, right? Yeah. Isn't that what yes, he does? Pretty much. <laughs> so, what do we have? That was cool. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, are you guys familiar with the LIGO uh, Gravitational Wave Observatory? I saw familiar, Diana but I always get that one it. confused. I get all those ones confused for some reason. There's like yeah. a few different ones. I'll tell you what, let me see if I can pull up a little uh, animation that shows how this works. It's on this video. Can I find it? <laughs> I am so prepared. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, um, Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO. Uh, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Observatory. That makes sense. Gravitational Wave Observatory. Yeah. So, this is actually kind of a new thing that just happened recently. This is from the Launchpad Astronomy. Pretty mm -hmm. great YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, so what you're seeing here, there's a star up here in Oregon, a star down here in Louisiana. These are two different LIGO observatories. And the reason that there's two of them is because they're so sensitive, they can literally pick up gravitational wave differences the size of like a tenth of a proton, Jeez. which is insane. Yeah. Like that's just an insane thing to even say. So, so they have to have two of them. And actually there's a third one called Virgo now that's in, I believe, Italy that um <clears throat> but it always has an attitude the reason why there's multiple ones say what it always has an attitude because it's a virgo <sighs> that's that's um not racist what's that called when you're against someone's when they were born you're month oh that's a thing you're monthist i don't know i'm <laughs> making it up but... <laughs> i'm sure you're it's a thing and we're gonna get sued Sorry, yeah zodiac cyst there we go <laughs> astrology is great anyway. i love it <laughs> <laughs> i i have had uh people like reach out on twitter and be like your channel has inspired me to go into astrology and i'm like oh, <laughs> wow <laughs> like, why it's not it's not the same it's not the same thing <laughs> all right so the reason why there's two of them is because they are so sensitive that obviously like you know even a, a car driving overhead or nearby could could you know like cause a little aberration here but because there's one you know a thousand miles away from each other they can corroborate with each other and tell that this gravitational wave has passed all the way through the earth. And now that there's a new one, uh, the, the Virgo one over in Europe, that's a third um, site, third place to measure it. Yeah. Third site. So they can actually tell which direction they these waves are coming from oh, because can, it kind of hits one just slightly, you know, they can triangulate right it now. That's right. So um, turn this off. Um, so yeah, this is the interferometer. So these are four kilometers each way. And yeah, there's the Virgo one over here. It is in Italy. I got it right. Look at me. <laughs> um, it'll show here in just Italy. a second. No, it won't. Oh, here we go. This is how an interferometer works. So it splits this beam. Oh, that's right. And then as the space time contracts and expands through these gravitational waves, it kind of shifts just these little wavelengths of the light and it picks up on that. Jeez. So that's how they pick up these gravitational waves. And the gravitational waves are from, um, are from stars collapsing into black holes going supernova. They're also from uh, black holes colliding and merging with each other. And this made news this week because they have detected the, the most massive merger of two black holes ever discovered. It's crazy. Uh, and this was actually something that happened 7 billion years ago. <laughs> Let me say some insane so uh, stuff that goes along with this. So, uh, okay, so first of all, ever since LIGO started in 2015, 
It says they have racked up an impressive resume detecting roughly 67 mergers of black holes, neutron stars, and merging black holes with neutron stars. Um, so it was kind of a big deal when this happened in 2015. It was the first time, that it, like, this is this is the first new way of, of observing the universe that we have come up with mm -hmm. in, like, Hundred hundreds years. of years, right? right? Well, this was Einstein's and, theory, and right? And it just gives us whole new eyes. Uh, it did kind of, yeah, it was yet another thing that kind of proved Einstein right. Um but like, yeah, it's just it's just like a whole new set of eyes and a whole new way of looking at at objects in space and what's going on in the universe. But um, anyway, this thing, the process of this collision released the equivalent of seven times the mass of our sun in energy in a like a microsecond. That's that crazy. sounds like a lot. Bloom across the universe. <laughs> wow. Um, what was also interesting about this was that um, apparently i'm going to butcher this a little bit but there's there's two different types there's three different types of black holes there's like small ones and then the supermassive black holes that you see at the center of galaxies that are like billions of times the mass of our sun and then there's intermediate black holes which are around a hundred to a thousand times the size of our sun or the mass yeah. of our sun and they'd never been able to detect an intermediate one before for reasons i'm not completely sure about but this one uh showed us the first intermediate one so as you can see, it has the intermediate mass black holes. This is the first one. It's called GW190521. Well, and it's the first so it's... merger of, an, or is the first merger that became big enough to be an intermediate mass? I believe so. Yeah, yeah kind of yeah. based on Because like these two that merge down here. Yep. Can you see my arrow? Yeah, mm -hmm. they were below, each of them were below yeah. 100. It looks like they're 80 right. and 60 and so they, they made one that's up here in the intermediate wow. area. So, uh Again, I'm not sure why they could detect the smaller ones more so than the bigger ones, but that's just well, maybe they're just less that. frequent, you know. Yeah. And we've, if we've only been, if this has really only been online since 2015, like our our scope of the universe's black hole collisions is hilariously microscopic at this point, you know. Well, um, but yeah. are, the are they? They're not things. detecting it like in real time, right? They're detecting like the aftermath of it, right? Well, it depends what you mean by real time, because I mean this happened seven billion years ago in, right. in reality, and it's just now reaching us. But yeah, right at the top of the article right now, it says waves taking seven billion re years to reach us. It, it was seven billion light years away then. Right, right, right. But five point three billion parsecs, parsecs away. Yeah. So we detected it in real time, though. It's not like the Big Bang where there's like this hum oh. that we can hear that's always been here, right? No. Oh, I think we're, I think I see what you're talking. Yeah, about. I like, think like the detected... gravitational wave is a specific thing. It like comes and goes, and yeah. that's it. Yes. It is a literal wave that passed across our planet. Got yes. it. Okay. 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 And they detected it last last May. I, I had the sense because of, I guess my, you know, childish understanding of how gravity kind of shapes and bends <laughs> things, that it would be one of those things where we would just be able to look and say, oh yeah, well look at that. Oh, that means that this must have happened. I I, oh. I I didn't pick up on that. It was like an actual observation that occurred. It was more of yeah, yeah, like the Big Bang thing where you're like, oh yeah, there it is. It's you know still there. Gotcha. We're yeah, you're, no, it was a one-time yeah, like background radiation and stuff like that. No, it's a it's an event with motion <laughs> and like it passed us and we had to observe it at that time. Yeah, it, is part of the idea eventually? Maybe I heard someone talk about this at the 2015 thing or whatever that this would be what they would call free energy, that if we could actually find a way to turn these gravitational waves into electricity, that essentially we'd have, you know, uh, unlimited free energy. Uh, like, you know, you could have machines that just, oh, one just went by, boom, the entire, r r you know, stock of energy we've ever need to live off as a species is now completely full again. Something like that. I mean, if you could capture that energy, it's an insane amount of energy, but yeah. That, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I remember, I think that's the concept behind free energy. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's gravitational yeah. waves yeah, or something else with gravity, but. I think by the time the gravitational waves reach us, they're so tiny. I mean, like, like I said, it's like half the size of a proton is what we're actually detecting right. there. So I'm not sure how much energy you could get out of that having said that though i mean there, there's probably gravitational waves blowing past us all the time yeah in, in some way so, or someone there, go you know? google free energy because I, I believe this was the concept <laughs> oh god here we go there, there's a lot of those concepts yeah. actually next no, thing no, you know no, we'll no. Just do this a, isn't like some you know homeopathic perpetual motion thing. machine this is like a real thing 
<laughs> well, so just real quick, I was I was looking this up. There, there's a future. I think in 2030 they're going to launch this. It's called Lisa, and this is oh, a, yeah. a gravitational wave observatory in space. Yes. Yes. So you see it like kind of circling around. I thought there. that already Those got launched. Like 25. Oh, no. Say what? Oh, that I thought that was launched already. You're right. It says early 2030s. I thought that was something that already flew. Okay, sorry. Keep going. Not, yeah. They may have had like a test bed mm. that kind of was mm. trying to see if they, they could, make could it, like connect in space. But these are three different satellites that are clearly like kind of <laughs> following the Earth here, like Trojan asteroids. But um. But they're all like 25 million kilometers apart. So it's that same interferometer idea, but instead of being four kilometers, it's 25 million. <laughs> so it'll be that much more sensitive. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, the stuff they're going to discover with that is just going to be freaking bonkers. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. If only there was, was like other a, things. Yeah. I, sorry. I, I really wish there was like a tabletop device that could, you know, measure like something, you know, it sucks that it has to be so big that it has to be millions of miles. I wish there was just a little way to detect it. Well, how do I pull up this link and we can talk about that? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, in real life, I just walk around and Tim just says what I'm about to say before I say it. Yeah. I'm a segue. He just, he just, I automatically interpret your thoughts and try to segue most of the time horribly. <laughs> <laughs> just really bad my wife's really tired of it just so you know <laughs> you need to stop um no so i also ran across this article it's from popular mechanics the title for those listening it says a tabletop device to measure gravitational waves is game-changing stuff um i'm gonna say out loud i don't understand this at all but you know how last week i was talking about the nano batteries the nano diamond uh, nuclear mm -hmm. batteries mm -hmm. There must be something diamonds are having a moment or something because it's, it's the same idea here um let me see if i can find it. so okay in the preprint paper researchers describe a small device with the modified diamond in the center the diamond is prepared by trading one carbon for one nitrogen which opens a critical electron gap where a new and functional electron is inserted put a new electron in there yeah. So it says they developed a system that uses the spare electron, which has a magnetic spin in one or the other direction to show signs of interference that indicate a gravity wave. Hmm. So uh, it did say that they're not quite able to. OK, so it says in this case, the entire diamond acts as a quantum phenomenon, making it large by quantum and tiny by interferometer standards. Hmm. <laughs> Again, I don't <laughs> fully understand this. I mean, but, um, it is large by quantum standards the dumbest thing you've ever heard? <laughs> Pretty much everything's large by quantum <laughs> That's standards. That's what I mean, yeah. Um, so it says there is one holdup. This is basically a theoretical calculation type paper. It says the technology to achieve either high vacuum or low temperature is available, but we need the technology to achieve both at the same time. So we don't quite have the technology to actually make this happen right now but it's probably on the way. Um, but the idea is we could have these gravitational wave detectors like just in your living room on a tabletop. <laughs> you could be eating spaghetti on a gravitational see, wave See, detector. I'm telling you, That'd if you sweet. could make a device that when, it, when a gravitational wave comes, it actually turns a turbine, you know, then you've got the, all the basics you'd need. I don't know how you get there. You gotta but, get off your free energy horse, Ben. It's not gonna <laughs> happen. I think it was a lot easier. Well, it's not free energy. It was generated from somewhere, right? That's true. <laughs> yeah. I think in that case, solar energy is free energy. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.